Hello everybody, welcome back to a new video. Uh, this is the third part in our uh, little mini series about textures. Uh, we're going to take the textures that we made in the last two videos and kind of combine them in a really cool way. And um, without further ado, let's just jump into it. All right, so here we have um, the final texture that we came up with on stream. Uh, if you don't know, I do stream on Twitch where I kind of take user input when I'm doing these things and this is where I do all the experiments for my YouTube channel. Uh, so if you want to see that, there's a link in the description and I definitely recommend you follow me on my Twitch. Uh, you can also request like sound design things uh, if I'm live in the chat and then I can immediately help you with that. Um, so yeah, with that out of the way, let's listen to the final sound that we made. And it sounds like this. Alright, so as you can see above here, um, there are four tracks going into this. Now this is actually the, the group that uh, makes the same sound here. And what we have done, basically, is we have taken uh, two copies of each texture sound and we have hard panned both copies. And then we're using uh, gain automation as well as some filtering to kind of um, have them come in and out in different uh, channels. and um, using these different effects. Um, kind of sometimes you hear it on the left side, sometimes you hear it on the right side and stuff like that. And then we're using some delay and some reverb to kind of glue it all together make sure that there's uh, some things that are a little bit more mono because this is a very stereo sound, but um, the reverb and the delay kind of glue it together in a nice way. Uh, so yeah, let's actually start making it from the sounds that we made in the tutorial. So I'm quickly going to grab those sounds, which are this one, which I'm going to place on a new audio track. And I'm going to set up another audio track here, this one and this one. And as you can see, they're very different textures. This is a little bit longer and more drawn out, and this has a little bit more stuff going on. It's a little bit more dynamic. Uh, this is the one we made from the voice in the second tutorial, and this is the one we made from noise. Um, from scratch without any uh, prior samples um, in the first tutorial, which is a little bit longer because of that. So I'm going to duplicate each track first and uh, then I'm going to take all of these tracks here and we're just going to combine them together. Now if we hard pen one to the left and one to the right and we do that for the other one too, you can hear we just have the two textures kind of glue together. Which already sounds very, very cool. And combining uh, the different textures that you can make like this uh, sounds really cool and it's really, um, really nice way to kind of make new textures out of them. Uh, but where it gets really interesting if we start using utilities. Uh, so my audio tracks come preloaded with a utility, a EQ8 and a compressor. The compressor, we're not going to need that, uh, so we might as well close it for here. Uh, but I'm going to use the gain on this utility here. And to make this a little bit easier, I'm going to uh, create the automation clip first. And then I'm going to copy a very small snippet of this automation clip where it says zero, uh, so that we can just paste it in to get back to our zero. So what I can do is I can just drag it down here, and then let's say I wanted to have it on zero back here. You can just copy it in and just delete some points like that. And then we can move in the next. Let's say I wanted to take it out here as well on the left channel. And then we can do it again. Now this is a little bit too rhythmic here. Uh, I want it to be a little bit less predictable and not just uh, dip it uh, for half a bar and then have it rise again. So we're just going to move these a little bit and we'll have it stay on for uh, the duration of this sound and then um, for this part of the sound we'll have it off and then we'll have it come back in here like this and let's move over here and then finally we'll have it turn off uh, right about here for this one and we're going to give this some curves uh, we're going to turn this down we'll turn this up and down like this turn this down this is kind of randomly done almost to kind of um, 
experimentation here again if you want to but now you can hear that we just have the sound play somewhere and somewhere it does uh, or in some parts and in some parts it just doesn't play now uh, we can do the same for the other one but what i would like to do here is kind of almost have the inverse of what we've done before here so it kind of feels like it's moving from the left to the right uh, but not entirely i do want them to overlap at some points so that we also have some mono-ish sounds so we're going to kind of do that here in a way uh, we're going to go like this and um, i'm quickly going to edit this to say zero and then we're going to move out of the way again here and we'll have it for this sound so that this sound can come through uh, in the right channel where it doesn't do that in the left and uh, here we'll go down again and we'll finally end up with something like this and again we're going to make some nice curves so it sounds a little bit more natural and we'll have this up and this down i guess and now the two together sound like this Now, if you're really worried about mono compatibility, what you can do is you can turn down these things. Um, so you can turn it a little bit more to the center. Uh, I like them hard pants because of the way the reverb and the delay kind of glues them together a little bit more later. And um, so yeah, now it's up to the next one and we're gonna do the, ne the same thing for this one. And for these textures, I'm not going to look at uh, what I've done here and I'm just going to go off the waveform for the first one. And then the second one will kind of do the same thing where we kind of look at the one we had done before and try to make some inverse or, or make it a little bit of an inverse version of that but not entirely so that they also have some overlap all right let's set this back to zero here and um, let's go down just right after uh, we have that main bulk of the sound here and then we'll go up again here Again, we have to set it to zero. What you could also do is create a point very far back here and then drag a point down in the middle and then drag this where you want it to. Uh, there's a few ways you can go about this, um, but I try to do it as fast as possible for you guys. Uh, so we'll have something like this, just a fairly simple curve. And then for this one, we're gonna do the same. So let's select the gain here. And uh, for this first part, we're gonna have the inverse again and then we'll kind of combine them towards this main sound here because I really want to have that come through uh, just based on the waveform I think that this will be a very cool sound to kind of have come through and uh, we'll turn it down towards here and then back up here and um, yeah we'll leave it like that I think so let's put in the curves We'll kind of inverse this part here. So now for a second sound, we have something like this. All right, so now they sound like this together. And that's all very, very cool, but we do have some points uh, which might be a little bit too harsh. For example, uh, this part is really harsh on the high end from both sounds, but especially this lower one. Uh, so what we can do here is actually some filtering and I'm going to set my uh, EQ filter to a gentle uh, low pass here. And we're just going to apply some nice filter sweeps uh, on top of this thing for this one. And uh, we'll do something similar for the other one uh, let's select our um, frequency a here and actually i need to set the type here as well um, we'll start a little bit later with the frequency dip and we'll have it come back a little bit later as well so that's again a little bit different and we might be able to do for example the same thing for this one we don't have to do it for all the channels it might be cool to have one of them uh, kind of in there and uh, do all the frequencies for all the time um, but we do want to uh, 
give it some frequency movement maybe uh, like this so now this is our final sound without effects you can hear that we kind of got rid of that nasty high frequency stuff that was happening here uh, so let's fix that problem now the final thing we need to do is just add some delay and reverb and uh, what I like to do for the delay is have a very long delay time so let's say let's do 8 and then a fairly short feedback and uh, dry wet here and um, for the reverb what we're going to do is we're going to give it a bit more reverb than a delay and we're going to set a very long um, decay time as well as no filtering on it whatsoever uh, we can just turn this off um, so this is going to be our final sound so now if you want to use it as like a sample what you could do is you could go in and you can go to the group here uh, which is 64 same as there and you can just record this to an audio file Now, because of the way Ableton works, um, you can see that we have some um, places where it looks like it's clipping very hard, but it's actually not. Uh, the reason why that is, if you consolidate it, you can see that it's just the gain being in the positive here, I think. Or maybe not. Maybe we should be just fine. Uh, let's test that hypothesis. Oh, it does look like we're clipping. Okay. Uh, in that case, what we're going to do is um, just turn down the volume a little bit before recording. I think that should fix that. Yeah, as you can see, we already have a little bit more of a dynamic waveform here. I'm sorry for the background noises maybe you hear, but um, my neighbors are also at home and they are having a birthday, I think. All right, so we can turn this up to zero. And now you can hear that we have, uh, or you can see that we're no longer clipping and we have a final sample that we can use as a texture. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, if it was helpful, feel free to leave a like. That really helps the channel out a lot. And uh, if you have any suggestions for future tutorials, please let me know. Um, that's uh, what I use on stream to do my stream stuff, which is also very fun. And um, if you want to see more of my content, uh, feel free to subscribe and thank you for watching. Bye bye.